Welcome back to animation blocking. This is part two. And today we're gonna to talk about the checklist for your animation blocking or to stay within the clickbait title, your animation blocking cheat sheet. Okay, so today it's gonna to be an outline of that cheat sheet. Sounds weird, cheat sheet checklist. And then next week, I'm gonna look at each item on that checklist and explain that in more detail. But I don't wanna do this whole thing now because this would be a two hour, three hour long clip that no one wants to watch, it would be way too long. So I'm gonna give you a brief outline of each item so that if you are already familiar with it, you can always come back to this clip and you have your list. But if you need further details, then you will have separate clips that will explain each item in detail with examples and demos and then you can ask kind of cross-reference the thing and that will be in the upcoming weeks. So let's get to the master cheat sheet. This still sounds kind of weird. All right, checklist. I broke up the checklist into separate elements. So first we have prep. Then we have quick check, which is kind of the two favorite things that I tell my students and it's super important, no one ever does it, but it's super helpful. Then we have workflow tips, a so kind of a list of things to check for more technical tips. And then at the end, a bonus tip. All right, now it's prep time. So what's the first thing you need to do? You need to plan out your animation. Damn it, Valentine. And I'm not gonna show it again, that was enough last week. But before you do anything, you have to know what you want to do. So you gotta have a plan, use reference, thumbnails. We talked about this for a long time. I did Q and A's about this. The better you know what you're gonna do, the faster your workflow is gonna be, so know your animation. It's Latin, it means know thyself. Then test your rig, either manually or by watching other people's shots, you can see what the rig can do. Because you don't want to get into a situation where you're halfway through, then you want to start with facial stuff and go like, this rig is really bad, this won't work. So know what you're getting into with your rig. Pose library, you gotta have a pose library for your hands, for your face, maybe some body stuff, but that's gonna help you a ton in terms of saving time. So that's the prep. Before you do anything, this has to be solid. Now. Quick check. There are two things that I keep telling my students and they don't really do it because it's a quick thing that you can tell if they do it or not. One, act out your play blast. And I don't mean act out your animation, but I mean do your play blast, you look at it, and then you act out exactly what you see. It's a quick check just for timing issues. It doesn't feel right, the balance, and it's a big time saver. But the bigger one is make sounds. Either manually or like make sounds and kind of cross-reference that with your shot, or you record your sounds, put that in Maya, and then use that as a guide. These two are huge, especially the sound thing. It may sound silly, no pun intended, but it's a huge time saver and a really, really good quick check. All right, workflow. There are a lot of items there that I have listed. I'm gonna go through these one by one. And like I said before, next week, we're gonna start doing demos and show examples and really explain these in detail. But for now, the biggest time suck when you work on things that's gonna slow down your workflow is that you look at a problem and you address this for a couple hours for like one finger animation and then that, and they get lost in that. So do a top 10 list of play blast notes. So you watch your play blast. Every time you cringe, you go, ah, this is not good. Fix that first. There's big elements first, which can be tricky, so you might need help. Ask your co-animators, co-workers, wherever you have, quick impressions. And then because you have that list, you can attack this big chunk and then move on and move on and so on. You don't get lost in little details. Do basic technical and visual proof watch. Kind of like proof read, but I'm called this proof watch. Now, there are subsections for that. Check your pops and arcs. You don't want anything distracting like a weird pop or some crappy arc. There are quick ways to fix that. Check your body mechanics. You can't have arm move without involving that shoulder, the chest, the hips, the head, and so on. Are my mechanics solid? Check for your silhouette. Either hit seven in Maya, if it's black and white, you can have your clear silhouette or squint your eyes and check what's visible, but you make sure things are clean and clear. If you get lost in all your notes and everything, flip your shot. Mirror the shot so it looks totally different, but it's a quick way to kind of get a new fresh look. Work in chunks, meaning that if you have a really long shot for whatever reason, you might get lost and there's too much to do. Go every 50 frames or every 100 frames. Go in those chunks. Now, if that chunk cuts into a beat, then just go beat by beat. Is this someone two steps to a chair and then a sit down, then the reaction, you can go beat by beat or by frame chunks. That way, don't get overwhelmed and you can attack things in a more organized fashion. Don't watch your clip on a loop. Put your shot in between other shots so you know exactly how it feels when you get into your shot and out of the shot because otherwise you linger on the first and last frame and you don't quite get what other people see when they see your shot for your first time you get used to things too quickly if you keep looping and looping that being said loop your shot when you do your technical revisions for arcs and stuff like that so two different things and don't repeat yourself pose wise and timing wise don't go a to b back to a if you grab something you go from a to b to somewhere else that's a c pose and don't repeat your frames if i grab my phone and then bring it back here that's not 15 frames and 15 frames this could be 15 and 20 or 
or 25 and 50, whatever it is, right? Don't repeat yourself. A, in posing, where you start and go somewhere and end up in the same place, or timing-wise. It's too generic, too robotic, too CG. It just, it's not it's not organic enough. It's not messy. It just feels too clean and too CG, and it, eh, it's just bleh. So that's your chunk of workflow. So as you have your planning and your prep and everything, these are the things you gotta go through so that it's visually presentable without being distracting to the first audience or whoever's gonna look at this in terms of, oh, that was a weird pop or I'm on this in this silhouette. So besides all your clean planning of these are the clear emotional beats and story beats, you gotta make sure that technically it's clean so you can present it so that's not distracting from the intention in terms of story or acting and so on and so on. Bonus controversial tip, Roto your reference. I know, I don't know. Mind blown. Heresy. How dare I say this? But this is in terms of workflow for saving time. Don't worry about your ego. This is not about this. I'm cheating. This is just for you working fast and checking your ideas quickly. And that's the cheat sheet. I'm sure I forgot some things. I'm not going to go into facial details because that to me is then blocking plus and polish. But this is to me the beginning aspect of I'm starting my shot. I got to have a plan. I got to implement what I did. And I got to work through that. It looks presentable. And here we go. So this is for me my cheat sheet for your initial blocking. These are the things that if you check all of this, your animation is going to look smooth enough so it's not distracting or confusing and it's going to get you into a habit of working faster so that you don't do all those steps in, you know, in like 10 hours, you can combine a couple steps into a faster workflow. So you might be aware of all those things and you might have tools, you might have done this already. So this clip might just be your checklist that you can go and I can write these down in the description and you can see, oh, I did I do this? Okay, you're done. But still, there's a lot to unpack. So starting next week, there's going to be a separate clip for each single thing with demos and examples and just a more detailed approach again because I don't want to do a three hour clip that you're going to be massively bored going through so I'm going to chunk this out so it's a bit more palatable and you can just you know have your own playlist of I like this I don't care about this I like this so that's the plan now of course if you have other things comment let me know I can maybe add that later or you can just have it listed in the comments other people can see and, and that's the extra additional help and that's it as always, if this was helpful, give me a like, subscribe. You know this whole thing, you know what I'm always gonna say. But that's it, that's the list. Starting next week, more explanation, demo time, example time. Let's get into this, this nitty gritty so that you have a clear understanding of what I mean, but hopefully a good step-by-step -step instruction of this is how I attack a shot, this is how I can save time, this is how I can pump out blocking passes quickly so I can show ideas quickly and get feedback quickly. Boom, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching, I will see you next week.